Hey, what's up everybody? Jumping here. Today I'm going to be bringing you another Mass Effect 3 gameplay commentary. Uh, today I'm going to be using a kind of special gun. It's going to be the Striker Assault Rifle. Decided to go ahead and do this gun because I've had some requests for it. And I really, really love this gun. It's actually a lot of fun to use. Okay, now for the mods I'm going to highly recommend. It's going to be um, the Extended Magazine. Very important. And then the extended barrel, which is just going to increase your damage. But the extended magazine is extremely important because you want to be able to shoot this gun as much as possible. Now for the build, this is going to be a human soldier. Definitely the best class for this gun, the only one I like it on. Um, for adrenaline rush, I still highly recommend hard hardening. What this is going to do is this is going to decrease the damage you take to your health and your shield. So pretty much just damage protection, 40%. Damage might seem nice, but Harding, you have, you know, he's a weakling. You have to have it to keep him alive. For your second one, I highly recommend melee damage over duration. Reason why is because duration is good. It's just that you want to be able to spam this power as much as possible. And they recently made an update that lowered the recharge speed of this power. And the reason why you want to spam this power is because of the last one right here, shield boost. If you look, if you had duration, then you're gonna have to wait longer to use this power to get your shields back. You want to be able to span this so you can get your shield back as much as possible, so you don't die as much. Um, now let me go and get into frag grenades. Now I've changed this a little bit, but I don't really know if I like it. I went for radius this particular time around. It increases its radius to 8.5 meters, pretty much. That's really huge. That's an insane radius for a grenade. But I still think I would prefer damage over radius, um, just because the damage is really nice. And radius, I mean, I don't know, you'll hit everything in a room, but with 6.5, if you can aim your grenade right, you'll hit it everything anyway. For the second one, definitely go for max grenades. This is going to uh, bring your total up to four nades you can carry. So that's that's really awesome. Um, now for the last one, this is really up to you. I highly recommend armor piercing if you play against reapers a lot, because this is with godly against reapers and, you know, things like that. But um, I, I also highly recommend Shield Overload, which is what I went for if you play against Geth and if you play against uh, Cerberus a lot. I mean, it's really up to you what you want to get, but I mean, I don't know. I like, ar I like Armor Piercing better for Reapers and, you know, all that good stuff. Now for Alliance Training, definitely damage capacity is going to increase your recharge speed and also get your nades some more power. Same with power damage, this is also going to, uh, you know, increase your nade power. And then the final one... I highly recommend for level 20 would be weapons damage um, just because he is a soldier so you're going to be using guns on him so it just makes the most sense. For your shields or your fitness I highly recommend just all shields pretty standard for most characters um, you know this will also allow you to get more shields back with shield boost things like that alright now for the equipment uh, definitely assault rifle rail amp 3 that's very important it's going to increase the damage if you're going to be playing against reapers like I'm about to be playing against reapers I highly recommend um, incinerary ammo but if you're not or you're playing silver I highly recommend cryo ammo um, but only for silver for cryo ammo incinerary ammo it's definitely better for gold and then the final one which is very important is stable, uh, the stabilizer mod meaning uh, this will give you 100% weapon stability this gun really needs weapon stability uh, it works pretty well on Turians and such, but like I said, the main problem with this gun is the reload time and the low magazine capacity. Now, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about this gun since I'm sure everyone's curious about it. Like I said, this is slowly but surely becoming one of my favorite uh, assault rifles in the game. It's extremely powerful. Uh, if you use it right, it will just mow down enemies in seconds <clears throat> but I highly recommend it just for human soldiers reason why is because you know the, like I said the reload time is really it it's so slow and 21 bullets in a clip even with extended barrel uh, extended magazine it just isn't enough like you know you could shoot it and then you're just gonna have to run out of ammo and it just doesn't work and at least with the human soldier you can pretty much just um you know, you can pretty much just never have to actually reload. And you'll see me do that a lot. Now, you, you know, you might be thinking, why, you know, for a lot of a lot of times when I'm using this gun, you're going to be probably thinking, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Um, and the reason why, well, the way I can explain it is that, like, right here, I could reload it, but I'm not. I'm just going to wait to use a drill and rush. I like to use a drill and rush immediately um, just for the weapons damage bonus. 
I don't like to just, you know, shoot it and then use Drill and Rush. Because if you do it right, because it's such a low recharge speed on a Drill and Rush now, that, you know, you could pretty much just constantly, you know, never have to reload your gun. And that's amazing. And when it's on, you're going to take less damage. And you're also going to, um, you know, you're also going to be able to, um, you know, not have to reload your gun and do more weapons damage. So overall, it's a, an amazing buff. Um, a Drill and Rush has always been a really good but they've been really trying to increase the power behind the human soldier because in a lot of cases like he's considered to be probably the weakest soldier in the game and he really is i mean he just doesn't have the shields and you know he just doesn't have the shields and st uh, stuff to actually compete with some of the other soldiers so that's why they keep buffing him they buffed the frag grenades they've buffed the adrenaline rush all that kind of stuff just because they want to see him get more play so I mean if you use the right gun on him he is really good a couple really good guns that you know work extremely well on a human soldier is the claymore shotgun and also the striker assault rifle out of all those guns so I really believe this is probably the best one um, you know like when it just comes down to guns that are kind of designed in a way for the human soldier I think this gun was totally designed for a human soldier now one thing about this gameplay I did want to say real quick before I get too far ahead of myself is that this is actually going to be Reaper's Gold um, on Firebase Ghost, if you can't tell. We were actually playing Unknown Unknown when um, when we got this, but what was, um, you know, I, I've been playing a lot of Unknown Unknown lately, especially on Gold, and I it's a lot of fun to just, you know, play Unknown Unknown on Gold. But that's why I went for this particular build. That's why I did go for Shill Overload. Um... Because when you play Unknown Unknown, the chances of you getting Reapers are, lo you know, low only because Geff and Cerberus, they have shields. So Shield Overload, in that case, is a lot better. But if you wanted to just make this human soldier a Reaper killing machine, and that was a pretty nice little dodge I got right there. <laughs> uh, but if you want to make him a Reaper killing machine, you really do need to go for pretty much damage on your frag grenades and armor piercing. If you want to use him against uh, Cerberus or Geth, I mean, I don't know. I would still recommend damage over radius, like I said, but shield overload is so much better. Because uh, what's going to happen is that because it does so much damage to shields, a lot of the damage, uh, a lot, you know, it's going to do more damage to health because of that. Because it's going to instantly take the shield gone. Like the shield, the shield's just going to be dead. And then the rest of the, the bulk of the damage will go to the health. So either way, like, you know, it's just really up to you. Alright, so right here we're, we gotta upload, and that sucks. Like I said before, Reapers are really, really, really annoying if you have an upload. And the Banshee spawned right next to me, so I'm going to attempt to try to get this Banshee to follow me, but, you know, I don't know. Um, it's just, it just ain't gonna happen because it's coming after the upload right away. And now we're gonna, you know, just pretty much try to defend this whole area. I mean, the main thing is once the Banshee gets in here, you kinda have to get out. Um, it's just something you gotta do, and as you can tell, we all ran out of that room like flies, um, but, you know, the main thing is that if you can lure the Banshee out the room, and you go back into the room, or if you have one person, like, have the Banshee chase them around, yeah, it's gonna definitely help, um, the other thing too is, you know, if you're doing an upload, especially on gold, not every single person needs to be in the upload, it's like a king of the hill kind of thing, um, I don't know if you guys ever play Halo or if you play any type of uh, competitive King of the Hill games, but if you ever have, then you should know that you never need everyone in the hill, um, ever. Even if you get more time if you're in the hill. The reason why is because, you know, if everyone is in the hill, that's just going to be a big kill zone for your opponent. Like, you know, one grenade can literally knock you all down if you're not careful, or something can happen in the room that can really really kill you fast so a better strategy is to really just hold down like you know to really just uh, for well for maybe like a competitive game it would be just one person in the hill but in this, in this game since it's not really competitive and it's also like you know better if you have multiple people in the hill it's kind of just a good idea to have everyone kind of like watch one particular side of the hill um, or the upload really but you know, like, you know, one person can be watching the left side of that room when one guy on our team right now is looking out the window. I'm sitting right here because this way I can pick them off from a distance. Um, you know, if I can keep these guys back, 
and I can keep these guys from uh, getting into that uh, upload, that's going to really help out my team. Like, uh, you know, and also, it's going to keep the enemies distracted a little bit on me compared to them just shooting everyone through the window and, you know, the cannibals chucking nades into that room. You don't want that to happen either. Um, but as you can tell, so far, it hasn't been too hard. Um, you know, one of the biggest downsides to playing Unknown Unknown, though, is when you do get Reapers and you're not ready for it. Um, you know, so if you guys ever want to play Unknown Unknown Gold, uh, the main thing you have to do is you have to pick characters that you are somewhat comfortable with. Um, you know, a couple good ones would be, like, Gaff Engineers, good against everything. Most every soldier, for the most part, at least a human soldier, is good against everything. And there's a couple other characters that are pretty decent against almost everything, but... Like I said, it's just something you gotta watch out for. Like I said, I was lucky enough to get this map for the grenades, but I don't really even, I wouldn't even care if it was any map because honestly, like for this particular build with the striker, um, I mean, the grenades are nice, but you really don't need them as much. Um, as crazy as that might sound, but yeah, you just really don't need the grenades that much because you're just gonna be able to do so much massive damage with the striker. Now, like I said, though, uh, one thing, you know, I'm sure a lot of people won't even comment, because I, I, from what I feel, I feel like a lot of people don't really pay attention to the video <laughs> that well. Um, they always comment something that just kind of makes no sense to me, uh, because, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll say something in the beginning, or I'll, I'll, I'll show you something, and then later they ask a question about, this, you know, the same thing I done already showed you. But, yeah, the reason why this gun doesn't have no kick for me right now is because I have the stability mod on. You know, I don't want to see anybody comment saying, um, you know, wow, how why is it that gun has no kick for you, but it has terrible kick for me? Well, yeah, I have the stability mod on. Now, if you don't have the stability mod, you know, if maybe you just don't have the equipment, um, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I don't really know what to tell you because, like, I've used this with all the, you know, with the stability mod too, and it still had pretty bad kick, and... I mean, I don't know. Like, on a Turian, maybe it would be good. You could try to maybe put the stability, uh, assault rifle stability on. But that would just take away from the gun. You need the, you know, you definitely want the extra damage and you definitely want the extended magazine. But, you know, I don't know. Like I said, it, stability, here's the thing though, is that most of those stability mods, like, I have so much of those because I never use them. If I'm going to use an SMG that has a lot of kick, I use it on a Turian. And every other gun in this game, it really doesn't, you know, they really don't have that much kick, to be honest. Like, uh, only some guns do, and this is one of the ones that really do. Right here, I'm going to spam all my nades, just trying to get, because, like, right there, the guy we were playing with, Dark Assassin, he actually got uh, grabbed, and I was trying to knock her loose, but, you know, if I would have had armor piercing, or if I would have had um, the damage, I probably could have got, probably could have stopped that, but because I didn't, like, unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Like I said... That's just something that happens, though. It really does. Um, you know, like, it really can mess you up. And, you know, this wave is just... This wave is actually, the, I believe, going to be kind of challenging only because um, I believe that besides him getting grabbed early on, I think that um, Richard, a.k.a. Ryan, is actually going to get grabbed in a second here as well. And it's just, it's just going to be two of us fighting. Now, yeah, I believe it's, like, right here where he's going to get grabbed. Now, here's the thing, though, is that if that does happen, you know, it is it is kind of terrible, but it's not the end of the world, um, because if you could just play smart and you can play, you know, together and things like that, then you're going to have no problem. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, he just got grabbed. Unfortunately, but like I said, it's I wasn't I wasn't really too worried. I, I know that, you know, this gun alone can just mess up these Reapers and... You know, if I have another teammate helping me out, then yeah, you know, it shouldn't be much of a problem. And especially if one person could just kind of run around the map killing all the smaller enemies. Because that's one of the biggest strategies, um, or secrets really against Reapers, is that it's the smaller enemies that matter. It's not really the bigger enemies, you know, it's not really all about killing the Banshees, you know. It's, it's more about just killing these smaller things first, so that we can actually focus on the Banshees. And once the ban you know, if the Banshees are the only thing left... Yeah, you're gonna have you're really not gonna have much problems, um, you know, especially if like like right there, Jinx is on the other side of the map and the Banshees are on him, so he's just kind of running from them, hit, you know, shooting them a little bit here and there, while I'm on this side of the map, you know, pretty much fighting and killing most of the smaller enemies, um, 
Like I said, because that's, that's one of the most important things you got to do. You know, and as you can tell, this gun just does an insane amount of damage to, uh, to brutes and everything. Like, it just does a, a massive amount of damage to most of the enemies. But, I mean, I don't know. Like I, I, like I said, I really like this gun. Um, and right here, I believe this is our last enemy. Or we might have, like, one more or a couple more. I'm not too sure. But um, one thing about this gun, though, yeah, that was the last one right there. But one thing about this gun is that this was a gun where when I first used it, I really hated it. I mean, I really hated this gun. Uh, and the first reason why is because one thing I didn't know about this was that you can actually hold down the trigger like any normal assault rifle, and it will become like more fully automatic. Uh, and that's kind of crazy to me because I didn't know that. And like that's the reason why I actually hated the gun was because, you know, I was like, wow, this thing fucking sucks. Like... It just doesn't do that much damage and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But once I figured out that, yeah, once you hold it down, yeah, it just does a massive amount of damage. I mean, you can kill shit so quick with this gun. But, you know, still overall, it's still not, um, it's not perfect, though, because this is another gun. It's like the Falcon Away, where it's actually host, um, it's kind of like a host-only gun. Um, it doesn't really work right. It doesn't, like, your connection matters with this gun, um... So if you're host, yeah, you're going to have a lot of success with it. If you're not host, you might not be able to, you know, hit every, you know, you might be shooting at a target, but not all the bullets are hitting or not all the bullets are coming out. So, you know, that's something to think about. Now, if you, like I said, if you want to try this gun, I do recommend trying to maybe be host because that's where you'll have the most success with it. Um, I mean, another thing too about this gun is that it really, it really can do some serious damage to anything in a group. Um, it has a radius on the explosion, so I don't know what the radius is, but it's, I think, I believe, about a one meter, one and a half meters, um, like, big. So, you know, if a group of three enemies are clustered together and you unload on them, you'll probably kill about all three of them at the same time. So that's another great thing about this gun. You know, there's a lot of great things about the gun, but there's also a lot of downsides to it. Um, you know, but, you know, I don't know. Like, I, so I really like it now, though. And, you know, it's crazy to me because one of the things that I've realized is that, and uh, right here, there's going to be so many marauders in this room, I'm going to just chuck all my nades, uh, <laughs> trying to kill them, or at least take their shields off, and that's another, now that's another thing, though, guys, is that if you're going to use shield overload, or just use frags to take, you know, use it, like, play it like Halo in a way, where you're going to use your frags to pretty much just, um, take the shield off of an enemy, make them one shot, and then just shoot them to death. That's at least how I play with the frags most of the time. Um, but anyway, one thing I want to say is that like a lot of guns in this game, I really, I don't know, like I, I, I hate, I, I've hated them at first, and then I come to love them. And honestly, the truth of the matter is, there's not really one gun in this game that I don't like, to be honest. Um, now, there's a couple guns that are way weaker than others and are, for the most part, somewhat useless. But you know, I still don't hate the guns I could use the guns and I I believe I can do pretty well with them it's just you know hey it I don't know it just depends a couple of those guns would be like the locust is so weak it has no recoil but it's just it's so weak of a gun the predators really weak the eagles really weak things like that those guns are for the most part somewhat useless but you know I don't know I, I don't really think that it's it, it's not really a big deal now one thing guys is that um you know, like, one thing about this gun, you do not want your teammates getting in front of you with this gun. If they jump in front of you, um, you know, you will not be able to shoot through them. Now, a lot of guns in this game, you can actually shoot through people. Um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and, or if you have armor piercing on, you can shoot through people. Now, this gun, I don't believe armor piercing does anything for this gun. Just like the Falcon, um... I think you have to have bullets. Like the way it works is that if you read a gun, like a description of an armor piercing mod, it says something like, you know, the bullets can go through armor. Well, this thing doesn't shoot bullets. It shoots like some type of exploding round. Uh, same with the Falcon. The Falcon shoots a grenade. Same with the Gef Plasma shotgun. Like the Gef Plasma shotgun doesn't shoot pellets. It shoots plasma. So, you know, that's just what you got to think about is that, you know, that's the reason why the guns can't pierce is because piercing really comes down to bullets um, not not anything else so you know that's just kinda how it goes so just try to keep that in mind um, so you know like I said you don't need the armor piercing with this gun and you do not need um, 
you know, arm, um, you know, armor piercing rounds or armor piercing mod. It, it, it actually just is a waste if you even try to use it. So don't recommend it. But that's another downside is because, you know, your teammates are going to have to um, stay out of your way or you're going to have to stay out of the way of your teammates. That's one reason why uh, after a while in this game, I decided, you know, once these Banshees started to get heavy, um, what I've decided was that I was going to run around and do my little soldier thing where, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to kill all the enemies, um, or the smaller enemies at least. Um, I know for a fact that I can kill the boss level enemies as well pretty easily, but the downside is that, you know, it's going to take me a long time to do that. I have a risk of all my teammates jumping in front of me, all these kind of things. And to make it easier on them, it's actually better that I just kind of run around and for the most part kill, you know, the smaller infantry unit like enemies, the Ravagers, the Marauders, the Cannibals, things like that, and even the Brutes. And then if the Banshees are all my teammates, then they can just, you know, gang main the Banshee three on one or three on two or whatever it's going to be. And, you know, and I'll just make my, you know, uh, rounds around the map, I guess I would call it, don't really know what I would call it, I guess, circle around the map, <laughs> but, um, you know, I would pretty much circle the map and just, you know, when it, I was come up and help them out when they need it, um, but like I said, for the most part, I'm just going to be killing all the smaller enemies just to make it a lot easier on them. Alright, now there is one thing I did want to talk about in this video that really, really matters to me. And I really hope that everyone who watches this video will do me a big favor. And that is, please go on my Fun With Guns um, Episode 7 video with the N7 Valiant. And comment or like a particular gun. Because as of right now, I don't believe any particular gun is winning um, that, you know, the race or is ahead of any other gun. The only gun that is actually winning is the M90 Indra, which is the sn sniper rifle um, that was accidentally like released or whatever. They weren't supposed to actually have it. That's the thing. I don't have that gun, guys. Like I don't have it. So, you know, everyone keeps commenting it like I have it, but I don't have the gun, so I can't do that gun. And if that gun wins, then I don't know what to do. Like, um, you know, I don't want to pick a gun that only has like four you know four comments on it i'd rather you know have a clear-cut winner so i would really appreciate if you guys could go and keep that in mind go on there and comment a gun that you want to see that you know i haven't already done now i'll tell you right now what i've done and what i haven't done um i should i probably will start to put this in the description maybe of those videos the guns I've done is I've done the Arc Pistol in Episode 1, the Saber in Episode 2, the Scorpion in Episode 3, the Harpoon Gun in Episode 5, I believe the Disciple in Episode, uh, well actually no, the Harpoon Gun in Episode 4, and the Disciple in Episode 5, and the Javelin in Episode 6, and recently I just did the Valiant in Episode 7. So those are the guns I've done. Um, so what I really would appreciate if if you guys could go on there and pick a gun that I haven't done, and if you see any gun that has been chosen, you know, give it a thumbs up if you want to see it. Uh, if it's if it's you know if it's a gun you want to see, or even if it's not the gun you want to see, but it's a gun that is you know one that you're like okay, well maybe I wouldn't mind watching that. Because that would help me out a lot, guys. Because like right now, like the only winner of that series is actually the Indra, and there's no way I can do. I can't do the Indra. I don't have it now. If I get it, maybe I'll do it throughout the week. But I'll doubt. I doubt that I'm gonna get it. To be honest, um, you know, it's just it's one of those things. It's blacklisted. I, I have no control over this. So, you know, it's. I don't understand why everyone, you know, is kind of wanting to see the gun when. You know, I don't have it. I'm sure a lot of people don't. I mean, there's some people who might. But, I mean, God, you know, at least comment and say, hey, do you have the injury? I wouldn't mind seeing that. You know, because I can't reply to everyone's comment. Like, I've had, there's been so many comments on that video saying the injury. And I've replied to a couple of them saying, yo, man, I, I don't have the injury. Um, but then, you know, but then, the, like, the, literally the next day or a couple hours later, someone else will comment, hey, use the Indra. And it's just like, oh, man, I don't have the gun. Like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't keep up with this. So, like I said, I would really appreciate it if you guys could go do that for me. Um, you know, I'll put a link into the, into this video, to that video, 
if you want to go uh, just click on the link and get there um, but yeah you know like I said I really appreciate it if you guys could do that for me alright so let me go ahead and get back into the gameplay obviously this is wave 9 so there's, there's, in this wave there's, there's a lot more banshees I believe than normal and there's also a lot more brutes and ravagers and things but I don't believe there's that many marauders things like that so you know for the most part I believe wave 9 is pretty easy for uh, you know for uh, you know reapers especially is you know if you can kill if you can kill the smaller enemies first um, now right here I was so afraid I mean I was sweating I was so so afraid I was gonna assassinate it um, because I have some really close calls right here um, and that's really what brutes can do they can really screw you up I mean it's the brute that's messing me up to be honest um, you know every time that the brute gets close to me and stuff it's going to um, stun me and then if the banshee catches up to me it has a good chance of grabbing me that's kinda what I believe they designed brutes to do in a lot of ways but you know and right here I'm gonna have to use an op pack now I believe I only go down once this entire game I almost had a flawless and I was so upset when I went down I, I believe it might be even I don't rem I haven't been paying attention so I might already went down but I believe it's in this wave that I finally go down and it's unfortunate but it's kinda like whatever um you know, um, uh, yeah, I think it is this wave, but you know, uh, yeah, right here, like I was, <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna go down right here as well. Um, but I'm gonna run away and just start chucking nades. Now the radius on these nades are huge if you're gonna use radius, so you can just kind of, you know, in a room like this, if you were to chuck it into the middle of the room, everything in the room's gonna get hit. It, it really will be. Um, but like I said, I, I, six point. <clears throat> the difference is six point five meters versus eight point five meters. For you know, so. I mean, I don't know. The difference there is a difference, but I don't really believe that it's that much there. So you know, it's really not, in my opinion, there's really not a point to go for anything. Um, to go for the radius over the damage, because the damage brings uh, the damage actually I think brings it up to like another two hundred something points. So, I think that's a little bit better personally. Alright, and I believe this might be our last enemy we have to fight here. Um, so I'm just going to keep uh, shooting at it. Like, uh, the main thing about this gun is just to try to get the reticle over the body. Um, you know, just, just over their body and just unload on them. Um, it's not a very hard gun to aim, to be honest. It's only hard when you don't have stability on the gun. Uh, because it does have really bad recoil. But, you know, besides that, it's pretty easy to aim the gun. Right here, we're gonna get targets, so that is what's up. You gotta love targets, and I believe I'm gonna get a very epic fail rocket. Yep, and then I'm shooting another rocket, but luckily, I hit the um, you know I hit the target. I didn't kill the other guy, or the other banshee, but I I just killed her with frags. Then I'm gonna go ahead and kill the other target right away, and then now we're gonna have um, you know, now I'm just gonna have to wait for my teammates to pretty much um pretty much rocket the the last target now I, I i think everyone kind of forgot that this is wave um this is actually wave uh you know 10 and i was wondering why they weren't rocking the target like uh but like i said i think that you know that's how you know we didn't really have much trouble uh this particular wave and you know this is what it is um i also feel like i've been uploading a lot of reapers lately so you guys leave me a comment and let me know are, are, you know, what do you want to see enemy wise? Do you want to see Reapers? Do you want to see uh, Cerberus? Do you want to see Geff? Things like that. I know I don't upload a lot of Geff, but that's because I don't really like Geff. I think Geff are really boring and, and really easy for the most part. Um, especially, I mean, everybody plays Geff so much, especially on Firebase White, that, you know, I don't really think a lot of people are going to um, even want to see it. Now, right there, that was a waste of a rock. I don't know why he did that, but. It's whatever. It wasn't really a big deal. I'm gonna run over here and you know try to take out like you know, like I said. If you can't tell, like my 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 simple strategy is just to run around and take out all of the small smaller enemies first. And right here is where I die. And I yeah that was upsetting. That was a, that's where I finally die in this video. And that that was that was messed up. But whatever. It doesn't really matter much. Um, and, you know there's so many brutes, man. Like, uh, in the later waves, they really send a lot of brutes, a lot of brutes at you, so, you know, you just gotta be prepared for that. And the right here, he, uh, Dark Assassin's gonna go down, but I'm gonna pick him up, things like that. Yeah, anyway, guys, 
Um, like I said, you know, the main thing, uh, the main reason why I actually released this video was to talk about the whole Indra thing, to be honest. Um, that's one reason why I really wanted to put this video out there. So, like, uh, you know, my number one thing is that I really hope that you guys can do me that favor and go on that video and vote for something that I actually have or, you know, leave a comment, whatever it's going to take, you know, thumbs up, comments, all that kind of stuff. So that would really help me out, and I would really appreciate that if you guys can do that. Um, anyway, though, um, you know, this is going to be the extraction wave. The main thing about this wave that matters the most is that you stay in this particular side of the map. Now, I've had a lot, I've had a couple gameplays on this map, and I've talked about this before, but I want to make this clear just because it's very important, especially on this map, but almost on every map. Most of the maps, there's certain positions um, that are like strongholds in a way like they're the positions on the map that you can for the most part call like a stronghold I call them the Alamo um, you know just like it's like that position on the map where it's like oh shit we're gonna die or you know we're getting surrounded it's like let's retreat to the Alamo let's retreat to the you know the godly defensive position on the map because that way we're going to be able to you know stay alive um, and this position over here is definitely the position on this map now I'm going to wait to use this rock until I can get them both in range and that's very important to try to get both the banshees in range and I believe yeah I actually took them both out but and there was that glitch where you shoot a rocket at something and someone else gets the kill I don't know why that happens but it's kind of whatever it, it doesn't really matter much um, but it is really weird how that does happen um, now the main secret to this is to just kind of wait till the last like 20 seconds to make a run for it at this point you know I'm telling everybody let's go let's go come on let's go but unfortunately Dark Assassin you know he gets pinned in by um, by um, you know brutes and I just told him to get up and I'm gonna have to try to get I'm trying to give him covering fire right here so he can get away um, but, you know, and actually, luckily, he did get away, and he made it into the circle with me, so that, that was what's up, so that was really awesome run, um, that was really cool at the end, that he got into the circle, and we got our full extraction, so, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, please comment, guys, please like, please subscribe, and also, definitely go check out the other video, and do me that favor of, you know just commenting about some gun you want to see or thumb thumb um, or just give a thumbs up to somebody who commented a gun that you wouldn't mind watching and that would really help me out but besides that guys have a nice day